Hey you guys, so there's like a lawnmower or something going on outside and it's, I can hear it. I hope that the, it doesn't come through in the audio in this video and if it does, I apologize. But I think I've done, I closed all the windows. I really don't know what else to do to try to cancel out that sound. But hopefully we can work through it. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Noreen, your resident foot and ankle specialist. Welcome back to my channel. And one of the things I want to do on my channel is answer your guys' questions. And uh, when I put, posted my first video, I got a question about bunions. So that's what I want to address today. So today we're going to talk about bunions, what causes them, what you can do to treat them, and do you need surgery? causes a bunion. Now, genetics does play a role in it. So if your grandma, your grandpa, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, cousin, whoever, if a lot of people in your family do have a bunion, there is a higher likelihood of you having the possibility of developing one as well. However, another thing that can cause a bunion is your biomechanics. So it's kind of the genetical component, but also the biomechanics kind of both together that will cause a bunion to occur. So biomechanically, what happens is, again, you guys, like I said in my previous video, a tight calf muscle causes a lot of pathology in the foot and ankle, and a bunion is one of them. So I'm going to bring out my handy dandy Mr. Floppy, and I'm going to show you on this foot model how that bunion could develop. <music> So you guys, like I've mentioned before, when you have a tight gastroc soleus muscle belly, that can lead to excessive pronation. Pronation is a normal part of gait. However, when it is excessive, it can lead to foot and ankle pathology, such as a bunion. What happens is you have that tight gastroc soleus muscle belly. It causes excessive pronation, which then unlocks your metatarsal joint, which then allows your first metatarsal to move out of position. So it'll allow your first metatarsal to start rotating this way and it causes your hallux to rotate this way, forming the bunion right here. This is where people get that bump pain or shoe gear irritation. Sometimes when the bunion is really bad, you can also start to get pain within your first metatarsal phalangeal joint itself. So you guys, bunions are a progressive deformity, which means they will get a little bit worse over time. However, there are some conservative treatment options that you can use to kind of help slow down their progress. It's not going to stop them from developing, but it'll help slow down how severe it can become. You guys, your first conservative treatment option is to wear shoes that basically accommodate that bunion, whether it's the bunion I just described right now or a tailor's bunion. Just wearing shoes that accommodate it, that have a bigger toe box, a wider and a deeper toe box to accommodate that extra space you might need for your toes. So you guys, like I said in my last video, stretching is so important for your foot and ankle health. So again, for your bunions, if you have bunions, you should also be stretching out your calf. So decreasing how tight your calf muscles are can help take some of that tension off of the excessive pronation that your foot might have to go through to accommodate for that tight calf muscle. So you guys keep doing the stretches that I talked about in the last video. And if you want, I can also make a video specifically about some stretches that you can do because it is so important to maintain a good, healthy foot and ankle. You guys, one of the last things you can do to help treat your bunions conservatively is wear orthotics. This is also something that I do every single day. I have a pair of orthotics that are custom made that I switch between my shoes whenever I am wearing them. And I wear my orthotics every single day when I'm outside. Like I stated in my last video, I do wear house slippers in the house that have arch support because I do have bunions, so it's something that I have to take care of as well. So I wear good arch support in the house that are not my orthotics, but it's their slippers with good arch support. And then outside of the house, I always wear my orthotics. So to summarize, those three conservative treatment options are to wear shoes that are accommodating for your forefoot to stretch out your calves and wear orthotics wear some type of arch support now when i got the question about bunions in one of my comments in my first video the person also asked me what about bunion splints 
Bunion splints are something that you can find at the drugstore. You guys, when you put a bunion splint on, it will hold your toe in a more correct position, but it isn't going to treat the actual bunion. What it will do is perhaps put your toe in a better position so that maybe you're able to fit into some shoes that you might not be able to fit into without that splint, but it isn't something that's going to treat your bunion. It's just something you could use if you wanted to, and if you find that it's beneficial for you, that maybe it helps you get into shoes that you want to wear, then go for it. If that works for you, that's awesome. So you guys, once conservative options have been exhausted, the next option is surgical treatment. Now, a big question is, do I need surgery? Do I need bunion surgery? And honestly, you guys, the only person that knows the answers to that question is you. This is something that I tell my patients to ask themselves when they ask me, but do I have to have surgery? Do I need surgery? What I tell my patients to think about is, can you do the activities you want to do every day without pain? Can you do everything that you want to do without thinking about, oh my God, my foot is killing me. I just want to sit down. So what you have to think about is, is your pain because of your bunion stopping you from doing the things you want to do every day. So if you're a runner, is your bunion pain stopping you from running? Um, if you're a gymnast, is your bunion pain stopping you from doing your gymnastics? Or if you just want to be able to take your dog out on a walk or just go for a walk around the block, is your bunion pain stopping you from doing that? So just think to yourself, is my bunion pain bad enough where I have to stop doing the things that I love to do? If the answer is yes, that is one I would consider a surgical correction and surgical treatment. So you guys, this topic is something I'm very familiar with because I do have a bunion myself. And for me personally, um, the pain got to the point where I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. So I decided to get surgical intervention and my bunion has been surgically corrected. If you guys want me to make a video about my bunion story, about why I decided to do it, what it was like to have surgery, um, how I felt throughout the process. I'd be super happy to make that video for you guys. But if you want me to, just let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, if no one wants to hear about it, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. Um, so I hope you guys found the information in this video to be informative. If you want me to go into more detail or less detail in my upcoming videos about specific foot and ankle pathologies, let me know and I can either make these videos longer or shorter. So let me know in the comment section down below. You guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to stretch and subscribe, like this channel and this video, and comment down below, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.